the spark lights the gasoline and it. Oh, it, 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 sorry. It does what? Uh huh. And what is? What does that mean? It gets the engine going. Gets the engine going. Uh huh. That's the sound of an engine going. Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm a science teacher. I'm Cheryl, and I slept through science. Each episode, we'll tackle a science question you may have learned in school, but can't quite remember or fully explain. And I'll take the risk of asking the dumb questions so that we can all understand the science we slept through. The bell has rung. Let's get started. Welcome to Lesson 58. We are answering more listener questions today. So Cheryl, whose question are we answering? Well, the last two weeks, we answered questions from the same family. So we mm -hmm. answered a question from Jane, who's a mom mm -hmm. and a friend of ours. And then her son, Colin, we answered mm -hmm. his question last week. And now her daughter, Wendy, also has a question. So the whole fam was like, listen up, guys. We have science questions. That's great. And um, it's fun. They're using this as part of their homeschool science unit sometimes. So I'm awesome. I'm so excited to be on their TV for their homeschool <laughs> lessons. So Wendy's question, just a, just a, just a little bitty question, right? Okay. How do engines work? Oh, so just a, a real simple, basic thing. Like how do engines work? Like how do engines work? Uh... <laughs> so it sounds like you feel really confident in your current understanding of how engines work. Um, I mean, I can tell you where an engine in my car is, is about the level that I'm at. So we're, we'll, we will see how this goes. Today. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll start with the pre-assessment as much as we're able to get out of that. Okay. Uh, so you know where an engine is located. <laughs> uh -huh. yep. What does an engine do? It makes the car go okay so that's a good place to start so it makes the car go what does an engine need in order to make that happen well it needs fuel okay in the form of gas or electricity okay and what does it do when it uses that fuel or electricity I think there's spinning involved somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Any idea what is spinning? N nope. Okay. Um, some something or other, I think, is spinning. Okay. And then somewhere there's some fluid in the car, but I don't know if that's in the engine or related to it but there's some fluid um i and think that there's also there's like a fluid. spark uh, i don't know there's fluid in my car somewhere or other that's pushing through a tube and does but that's that. different than the fuel oh yeah yes okay yep so some other fluid mm -hmm. there are fluids oh fluids okay well yeah i mean some of them make the car go and then some of them like there's brake fluid. There's a lot of fluid. Okay. And there's but, wiper fluid, and that's unrelated okay, to the engine at say, all. But those aren't related to the engine. So mm -hmm. let's just focus in on the engine. Okay. Great. Are there any other fluids that you think are involved in the engine? I think there's some kind of fluid. Okay. But I don't know if it's the on its way to the engine, away from the engine. Is it like a body where there's like veins and arteries? Oh, okay. What? What? Tell and me more about the that. The heart. Well, <laughs> this was kind of a silly analogy, but maybe it's related. That isn't it like veins go to the heart and arteries go away from the heart. There's like two directions, mm -hmm. and they're both carrying blood. Mm -hmm. And then, so I wonder: is there like two directions of things with engines, like something going in it and something coming out of it? Okay. Maybe. Going um, I think out. you need like a spark of some sort. Like if sometimes it's hard to start an engine. Okay. If it's super cold or if like you're, and that's related to your battery. 
actually. But so you need the battery to start the engine. And it has, I think it has to spark or something. What do you Maybe. think is sparking? Oh, I don't know. I don't think the battery itself is sparking because that sounds concerning. I think it's like sparking something in the engine to like start it going maybe, but I don't know. Okay. Um, but starting an engine can be hard, but again, I think that's a battery thing, but it, you can okay. like hear it like turn over. I think they say. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before we started recording, you told me whenever I say, I don't know anything about it, that like, I'm usually wrong. This might just be one of the time. I'm just saying everything <laughs> I know about cars at this uh -huh. point. And okay. it's not a long list. It's okay. My car is white. I can tell you that. Ooh, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. What color is your engine? Probably silver or black. <laughs> okay. Because? It's made of metal, I'm guessing. Okay. See, there's something you know. It's made out of metal. Oh, my gosh. You're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so let's see, we've got that it makes your car go, it mm -hmm. needs fuel, and then it's spinning and maybe some other fluids. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's things that go in and go out like a body. I think it is the heart of the car though. I think it's like, okay, it's pumping, it's making the energy. Okay, what is, regardless of how it gets energy, what yeah. does it need to use that energy for? Well, oh gosh, all I can think of is like it powers the vehicle, but like uh -huh. it creates the power that the vehicle needs to move. Is it like continuously creating power or okay. maintaining power? Okay. And if it does, where does it get it from? Well, eventually itself. Well, like, no, not necessarily. It's like, um, it initially gets it from the battery. Okay. Because I, I know, like, okay, I know this is about engines, not batteries. But if your battery is, like, dead and you have to somewhat have someone jump start your car, if you, you are supposed to keep it going for a long time because mm -hmm. the engine going, like, recharges the battery. Well, then mm -hmm. it needs the fuel, so it gets the fuel from the gas. So it's, like, turning that into the energy mm -hmm. it needs. At this point, the question has become, how do cars work? That's, yeah, that seems to <laughs> be the question, the question that you're answering. <laughs> is how do engines work? <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's, then let's do one final thing for a pre-assessment then, Cheryl. Okay. Are there any contexts outside of a car where you think an engine might also exist? Well, sure. Like other vehicles, so like a train. Outside of cars and vehicles. But trains aren't cars. Okay. Outside of transportation, is that well, what Well, okay, mean? so like, a, it, would you think a train's engine works the same way as a car engine? Probably not. Probably in the not. old days, they needed coal, but I don't know if they still need coal. Okay, so in the old days, they used coal. Do you know what the coal did? The same thing that gasoline would do. Burn. burn burn okay so does your gasoline burn okay so maybe the burns. gasoline burns it's flammable i know that <laughs> okay so do you think gasoline burns then in a good way okay yes <laughs> if all goes well in a good way <gasps> the spark lights the gasoline and it Oh, it, it, sorry. It does what? Uh huh. And what is shh? What does that mean? Gets the engine going. Gets the engine going. Know. Uh huh. That's the sound of an engine going. Sorry, I was. Must but have been then distracted. I also think like some of my kitchen appliances might have engines. Okay. In them, like a stand mixer, maybe that has an engine. Okay. In it of some sort. Like a motor. Mm. Oh yeah, is a motor and an engine the same thing? Mm, interesting Boats. question. What do you think? Do Boats you think motors, motors and engines are the same? I think they are siblings. Siblings. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was okay. going to say cousins. I think they're siblings. Um, what else? Like all sorts of like modern, I, I bet there are a ton of engines in my home in different okay. 
ways. Okay. But I don't know. Like, does my vacuum have an engine? Hmm. Okay. Is it, it's just the thing that gives the oomph. The I know thing I've used, that gives the oomph. Uh-huh. Yeah. I know I've used oomph on this podcast before because I said that something had more oomph. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think in lesson seven, I talked about oomph when we talked about car accidents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think engines give oomph. Engines give oomph. Well, that's mm-hmm. a, okay. That's a different use of oomph this time yes. than it was that time. But. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> yeah. Engines give oomph. Okay. Well, we'll we'll end the pre-assessment with engines give oomph. Great. Let's begin the lesson by defining a few terms and then just talking sort of big picture. Can we do that? That sounds amazing. Okay. Engine and motor. Those two words sort of came up and they're used synonymously a lot of the time to mean the same thing. And words evolve over time, so their meanings can change. But in general, it's accepted that an engine is something that uses a fuel like gasoline, whereas a motor just uses electricity. So then a stand mixer has a motor. Right. Okay. Yes. And then a a car has what you've probably heard of before, an internal combustion engine. Have you heard that term before? Yes. Yes, I have. Okay. Whereas a train, like a steam powered train has an external engine, an external combustion engine. And we can talk about the difference if that actually matters, but let's focus on the car. Cause that's sort of where you were focusing. And I was trying great. to get us broader to try and help you think more about it, but I don't know that that was all that helpful. So (laughs) we'll just focus on the internal combustion engine. Internal meaning it's inside. Great. Engine, which is, okay, it causes something to move. The combustion part though, we actually just talked about combustion a few lessons ago. Do you remember talking about combustion? Yes. When we answered Jane's question, Mm -hmm. we're talking about things burning. Exactly. Do you remember what it means for something to combust. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, it's the process. It's a process. Mm-hmm. It is. And it's a, a chemical change, the chemical mm-hmm. change of burning. Like I, I can't think it of the right burning. word beyond okay. that. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. It, it is. It's a, it's a specific process that involves a fuel source of some kind reacting with usually oxygen, but technically an oxidizer, but it's usually oxygen to produce energy, releases energy, and you end up with carbon dioxide and water as products at the end. Does that sound vaguely familiar? Yes, because I remember when we talked about fires that I didn't believe that water Mm -hmm. was one of the things that came out of it. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Do you, do you believe me now or still maybe not so much? (laughs) I mean, I believe you like, as far as I don't (laughs) think you're lying to me, Uh but it's like hard in those can, when I'm sitting at a campfire, it's hard to picture that there's even more water vapor in the air, but Mm -hmm. like, I I believe that I cannot see it and feel it and it could still be there. Okay. All right. (laughs) In the case of a car engine, what is the fuel? Most of the time, the gasoline. It's going to be gasoline. Yep. Yeah. You've got gasoline and gasoline goes through combustion. That's what combusts and it's combusting inside the engine. You talked about a spark plug. Yep. And in some engines... Yes, the spark plug is what's used to start or ignite combustion. There's actually in a diesel car, it works a little bit differently and they actually just use high pressure, but we're not going to worry about that. The point is you combust or you could think of burn or light on fire gasoline. You mentioned gasoline is flammable. Yeah. And just like we had talked about with the dust and other things like that, like I think I think that was the episode where I, I showed you a molecule of glucose. I don't remember. Remember when I showed you this? 
I definitely remember that. Yes, it's a whole mess of molecules. It's a whole mess of atoms that are all connected together atoms. To, make, okay. to make one big molecule. This one mm -hmm. happens to be glucose. Um, and it's not the same as gasoline, in case you were wondering. Um, but mm -hmm. we can use it as sort of an analogy of, of thinking about it because in a sense, there's very, very similar things because it is a hydrocarbon because there's hydrogen and a whole bunch of carbons and there's also oxygen, right? Um, and when you break a molecule like this apart and then reform it into carbon dioxide and water, there's energy that's released through that process. That makes Tracking. sense. Okay. Yep. And that's what, but it takes a little bit of energy to go in in order to break those apart in the first place. Okay. Okay. And so that's like with this, with my model example, I have to pull it apart. So I have to put in some energy, but then once I do, if I let it go, the whole thing's going to like fall apart. Right. And so a yeah. similar thing, it's on its own, it's stable, but if you put a little bit of energy in to break apart some of those bonds and then they reform into other things, you can actually have a bunch of extra energy at the end that then you can use to do things. And okay. so by igniting a fuel like gasoline, okay, uh, you're actually able to start breaking those bonds apart, forming carbon dioxide and water molecules, and releasing a lot of that extra energy that's in there. And that energy, in the case of an engine in a car, and I'm going to super simplify, okay? I'm not going to go into all the I'm, details. Okay? I'm very happy about that. That energy is used through a whole bunch of mechanical processes to turn the wheels of the car. Oh, okay. When you talk, you know, a car could be like front wheel drive or real wheel drive, rear wheel drive or all wheel to drive or mm -hmm. four wheel. The idea is how many of the wheels are being driven or powered by the engine. Most just passenger vehicles are two wheel drive, either the front two or the back two, which means there's only actually power from the engine going to two of those wheels. The other mm. ones just roll because yeah. the rest of the vehicle is going. Okay. And so okay. that's what the engine is actually powering is the wheels to turn. And there's a whole lot of mechanical processes in a car that make that happen that are not, I think, what the point of this is today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You look like you have a question. Well, so then like the other things that are happening in my car, like this, the little screen in my car and the, the lights and the other things, those mm -hmm. are being powered by the battery. No, they're also being, well, yes and no. Um, hang on, I was trying to simplify things. So <laughs> the battery is used to, to get the engine started. You mentioned that to mm -hmm. like, whether it's a spark plug or whatever, to give power to start the fuel burning because you've got to get it started somehow, right? You have to have that mm -hmm. energy from somewhere, that external energy that gets the whole process started. And then once the engine's going, one, it generates a lot of heat. So... That's why you, you know, your car has to monitor its temperature. That's also why if you're really, really cold and you try to turn the heater on, it doesn't work right away. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because the engine is generating a lot of that heat. Um, and so, sometimes cars also have their own heaters as well. But a lot of the heat that heats your car comes from just the leftover heat from the engine. Because oh, engines are actually really inefficient as far as the amount of energy released when the gasoline is burned, most of it can't actually be used to move the car. A lot of it just goes into heat that you can't really use for a whole lot. So it's kind of wasted. That, that reminds me of light bulbs. Yes. Yes. When we talked about the incandescent bulbs were very inefficient and a lot of it went to heat. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing. Yep. It's, I mean, obviously it's a different process, but yes, it's the same thing where that energy does go somewhere. It's just not in a usable form for us as far as moving a car or lighting a room. And so if you can make things more efficient, as far as that energy goes, 
right? That's part of what yeah. they talk about when they talk about fuel efficiency, right? You can yeah. get more, more for the same amount of gasoline. You can get more distance out of your car. You can power more things like that whole idea for fuel efficiency. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah, that okay. totally does. Um, two other questions mm -hmm. then. Um, so you were saying that motors are, um, motors are different and that engines are powered by a fuel. Mm -hmm. So would electric vehicles not have engines, but have motors technically? Yes. Okay. Do yep. people actually call them motors then? Usually they do. Usually they, okay. they talk about the motors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So and that's one of the things about an electric there. vehicle that is, aside from the fact that they don't have emissions and things like that, in the same way, they have a whole lot less maintenance. They have m fewer moving parts. You talked about all of those other fluids. A yeah. lot of those other fluids aren't necessary in an electric vehicle because it's not doing all of these other things. It doesn't need oil for all of these parts that are moving past all the metal parts in the engine that are moving past each other, that they need to be lubricated so that they don't like scratch and rub and all that sort of stuff. And it doesn't need a whole bunch of these other types of fuels or uh, fluids because it, it, it doesn't have to do all those things. Electric vehicles are actually a lot simpler. Then, Interesting. Yeah, internal combustion engine. Well, that's really cool. Vehicles. It is cool. You also talked about kind of like a heart and how maybe some things yeah. come in and come out. And it's yeah. not exactly the same. There are things that come in and come out of the engine, but they don't cycle around. Like our blood mm. cycles around and keeps yeah. getting reused. It's more like our digestive system where you take something in one way and the waste goes out the other way. Okay. Right. So the gasoline goes in kind of like the food that we would eat. And then yeah. our cells in this case would be the things that actually quote unquote do the burning. That's the mitochondria, by the way, mm. separate issue. Um, and they actually use all that energy and break it down and do all those things. But then there's waste and the stuff that we don't need and that's left over and that goes out. And so that's like the carbon dioxide in the water. Mm -hmm. That's waste from combustion plus a whole bunch of other things. And that goes out the exhaust. And that's what the exhaust is or oh, the tailpipe. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it it does flow. It just doesn't go around and around. Got in it. That same sense. That's really cool. Yeah. Did you have one more question? No, you just answered it. Oh, okay. Well, there you go then. Do you feel like you have an understanding of how an engine works or do we need more kind detail? Of. Well, I am remembering that my husband told me one time that, cause you were saying the internal combustion mm -hmm. engine, I think he was saying something about how there's a bunch of little explosions mm -hmm. inside of it happening. Yep. So can yep. you, I know you can't explain that. Can you like elaborate a little bit about that? Cause now sure. I'm curious about that. Inside the engine, you have cylinders, which are like an open, think of like a, like a paper towel roll or a toilet mm -hmm. paper roll, right? Like a cylinder shape. And there's a piston, which is a, like a plunger. Think of like um, a syringe, right? Where you've okay. got a cylinder, you've got something that can go and it goes down and it can come back up again. Um, and the, the gasoline goes in there and when it ignites, it actually explodes. When we burn it, it actually explodes and expands and that pushes that piston up and that piston being pushed is what ultimately gets translated into motion. Cause that's now you've got from, from chemical energy that's in the gasoline is converted into mechanical energy, which means something physically moving. And that's mm, okay. that piston. And then you do all of these gears and all sorts of other things that then translate that motion into the motion of the wheels turning. Nice. But the gasoline exploding is what actually pushes the piston and actually gets that motion. And so your engine has a whole bunch of those that are all firing at slightly different times and exactly how they fire and when they fire and all those has to do with different engine designs and things like that. But that does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah, it totally does. Okay. Yeah. So yes, it is actually little explosions inside 
your engine, like actually. So, and that's why cars can catch on fire. I mean, that's one of the reasons why cars can catch on fire. <laughs> because I mean, electric vehicles can catch on fire too, mm. and they don't have little explosions in them. Mm. For them, okay. it's the batteries, and the batteries can have issues and have chem- a chemical reaction that can cause them to catch on fire and all sorts of things as well. But Dang. whole other issue. <laughs> And now you're an expert on how engines work. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Since you're such an expert on engines now, let's go ahead and have you take the quiz. Okay. All right. I'm going to phone Wendy and see if she would like to contribute as well. (laughs) There you go. There you go. What is the difference between an engine and a motor? An engine is powered by fuel. A motor is powered by electricity? Always? Yeah. Always? Or most I mean, of the time? That's a general category. Like I said, okay. we use them a little interchangeably. But yes, that's generally okay. the distinction. See, you already answered the first question right. <laughs> You're on a roll. What type of reaction happens in the engine of a car? Internal combustion. Mm-hmm. So it's a combustion reaction. A combustion reaction. Yeah. yeah. The internal part just means like it's in the vehicle as opposed to like outside from where the – like happens in the in the engine as opposed to outside of the engine. Okay. Gotcha. But the reaction part, yep, is combustion. Why do cars need gasoline? I mean – Because the gasoline is what creates the energy that then – eventually becomes mechanical energy that like makes the wheels turn and all that good stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to nitpick and I've nitpicked about this before. Okay. It doesn't create the energy. It has the energy that can then be contributed. Like the gasoline has the energy in it already. Could you say, okay. Could you say that the gasoline like when it explodes, that that creates energy? Nope. Or it still doesn't so, create energy? No. So here's – and this is a separate issue, but there is a law in science, one of the laws of thermodynamics. Okay. That says that energy is never created or destroyed. It only changes forms. And this is why I keep coming back to this and I keep harping. Oh, it's like a big deal. Oh, it is a big deal. Like energy is not actually created. We're moving it from one place to another and from one form into another. So, right, it's in the form of chemical energy when it's in the gasoline. And then it changes into the form of mechanical energy and thermal energy, heat energy when it explodes. But it's – you can't end up creating more energy than was already there in the gasoline in the first place. Okay. That's really good to know. And I might remember it more now that you told me it's a law because I don't want to break the law. Um, (laughs) But then my question is, does the gasoline already have the energy before it's it's on fire or exploding? Yes. Yes. It's just stored. The gasoline is storing the energy. And then it like sets it off. It releases that energy. Mm -hmm. Think of it like a battery. A battery has energy in it. It's just not doing anything until you put it in your device. And then that energy is moved into the device. Okay. That's, that's a helpful analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we can talk more about, maybe we need to talk about energy sometime too. Uh, Apparently, because it's still this like, it's still like I, I'm just taking your word for it at a certain mm-hmm. extent that things have energy and that energy like yeah. becomes light and all sorts of wild things. Yeah. And energy is actually more complicated to understand than I think people mostly realize. I was just correcting some quizzes for my biology class earlier today, and that was the part that was the hardest for most of the students was talking about the energy part. They could talk about the matter. They could talk about the molecules. But the energy was the part that was more confusing. So that's it's, it's more complicated than we think, mm. even though we use it all the time in our everyday language. Yeah. All right. Question four, what substances 
are in a car's exhaust and why? Carbon and water. Okay. And why is that um, that's what's left over after the reaction happens with the gasoline is I forget the term for the things you have left over. I know we've talked about it a couple of times. The things you have left over are those things. Mm -hmm. The product it's not created. You're right. <laughs> it's not created. Yep. They're called the it was products. Already there. Okay. Mm -hmm. The products of the okay. reaction. Yep. And it's carbon dioxide and water. Oh, okay. That, yep. Yep. And actually technically it's more complicated because there's some carbon monoxide and other things too, but yes, for the combustion reaction, combustion reactions, part of that reaction is that they produce carbon dioxide and water. And so that's a big part of the exhaust. What are they measuring when you go to like an emissions test? I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm guessing they're partly measuring how much carbon dioxide and other things are in it, um, okay. other quote unquote pollutants, all a pollutant is, is something that is not supposed to be there. That's there. It's kind yeah. of like a weed, right? Like a weed is just a plant that's growing where you don't want it to. Yeah. Right. Like it's not like a botanical yeah. like designation per se. Um, yeah. So pollutant is kind of a similar thing. It's a little bit more biological than that, but okay. um, so it's something that's not supposed to be there. That's there. So what exactly they're measuring? I don't know, but it's definitely some the stuff that's coming out of your car because when your car isn't working correctly sometimes it can burn things it's not supposed to burn oh, like burning okay. oil and other things and that'll put yeah. even more of those particles into the air that we don't want there interesting yeah last question how does an engine make a car move all the things we just talked about for example <laughs> so when there is that chemical mm -hmm. reaction mm -hmm. um, that makes little little explosions, mm -hmm. and then the explosions are in the cylinder, mm -hmm. and then that causes pressure for the mm -hmm. so the piston goes up. Mm -hmm. And as it's going up and down, then all of a sudden you have mechanical energy. Uh-huh. Nice job. And eventually that makes the wheels turn. Mm-hmm. Yep. That mechanical energy gets <laughs> translated through a whole bunch of things that eventually allows the wheels to turn around. Mm-hmm. You got it. Look at that. You know how an engine works. You're oh an expert. Gosh. You should <laughs> you should start to be an auto mechanic at this point because you're you know it so well. Mm-mm. Nope. Nope, no, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> okay. It's so not natural to me. It's not yeah. a good plan. <laughs> well, me neither, actually. I just, I like the science part of it, but the actual mechanical part, I'm not very good at. So I'm very glad that there are other people who are, who me can too. do that when I can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it for our lesson on engines. Why don't you go ahead and pack up your stuff and get ready for my closing remarks. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at I Slept Through Science or on Twitter at Slept Science. If you have dumb science questions like I do, please send them to us. You can email us at I Slept Through Science at gmail.com or you can even send us a voice memo and we'll play it on the podcast. Please rate and review our podcast to tell other people what you think about it. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode and share about our podcast on social media. Thank you to Beth Reed Miller for the artwork. You can check out more of Beth's artwork at Beth is something. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Ah! The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you.